In this video, we're going to discuss and visualize some of the sorting algorithms we've talked about so far. The first of which is going to be merge sort. Our input, as you can see on the screen, is an unsorted array. Merge sort works by taking that unsorted array and dividing it into two parts. We've color coded them here to keep them separated in our heads. It doesn't do anything to them just yet. It will then sort those two parts of the array. After it sorts those two parts of the array, it will iterate over both of them simultaneously, choosing the smallest element to go at the beginning of the array. So here, if we're looking at the elements, we have three at the start of the orange array and two at the start of the blue array. So we'll take the element two and put it at the start of the array. Afterwards, it will compare three to four. Three is the smaller of the two, so that will go next. It then compares four to five, so four goes first. It then compares five to 19, so five goes. Then 15 to 19, 15 goes. 19 to 26, 19 goes. 26 to 27, 26 goes. 27 to 36, 27 goes. 36 to 46, 36 wins. 38 to 46, 38 wins. 44 to 46, 44 wins. 47 to 46, 46 wins. 47 to 48, 47 wins. We are now done with the first array, so it will just iterate over the remaining elements in the second array. That is how merge sort works. It divides the array into two parts and then shuffles and merges them together. The colors here only show where the elements came from in the original array. They have no special meaning programmatically. The next of our sorting algorithms that we're going to discuss is going to be selection sort. This visualization will not show all of the steps of selection sort because most of the steps for this algorithm involve simply scanning the array for a particular element. Selection sort works by taking an array, iterating across the entire array, and finding the maximum element, and placing said maximum element at the end of the array. So in this array, our maximum element is 50. So the first thing it's going to do is iterate over the array, and then eventually it will have swapped and made 50 the last element. It will then go back through again, finding the maximum element and placing it at the end. Conveniently here, the maximum element is already at the end. Unfortunately for selection sort, it would actually need to iterate over the entire array, which we will not visualize here. Now we want to find the next to max element. Looking through the array, we find that that is 47 and it swaps to the end. We then find the next to max element, which is 46. Then the next to max, which is 44. We're going to keep repeating this process, taking the maximum, which is 38, and putting it in the end. Then we take the next maximum, which is 36, the next maximum, which is 27, the next maximum, which is 26. It was already in its right place. And this is getting tedious already, so why not just sort the remaining elements? Selection sort tends to run slowly because it always needs to scan the entire array to determine the maximum element. This is a bit of an unfortunate consequence, but as we saw here, we do maintain a sorted section of the array at the end that we can use, use and access asynchronously if we needed to. So if we had an application where we needed the maximum element or the first couple of maximum elements, and then we might later down the line need some of the middle elements or the smallest elements, we could use this sorting algorithm to find those maximums relatively quickly and let the sorting continue as we are using said maximum elements.